as uh, quick as you can. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Cash Cure. I am right now a writer and a game designer uh, with the Fail Better. I've worked on Sun the Sea, Sun the Skies, and I'm currently lead on Call of London. Uh, in my free time, I work with stage studios on a game called Over the Alps, being uh, spies thriller so that the outbreak of World War II described as 80 days means the great escape and like freelance, I certainly like to. Um, and today we're going to be talking about choice in games. Uh, and my hope, uh, because choice in games is just such an incredibly huge topic that it can't really be discussed fully in 20 minutes, is instead to just give you a practical framework uh, to help uh, examine uh, your stories uh, and maximize their impact in an interactive medium. Uh, this isn't a dogma, this isn't the one true way to do it, this is again just a framework. So if you find any examples you think uh, don't quite mess with that, uh, hold on to them, you'll find some interesting things down that way. Uh, so what is a choice? Everything in the game is a choice, um, which, which gives us a bit of a problem. Um, so you, you think about a game, uh, games give the player an uh, a problem that they have to solve, and they give them a toolkit to solve it. Uh, the game's objective is that problem, and uh, the toolkit are the mechanics the player has in order to solve it. For example, uh, Mario here needs to reach the flag at the end of the level, or he will die, uh, so he can run and he can jump. Uh, likewise, you need to stack Tetris bricks uh, in such a way that they destroy themselves and don't stack up to the ceiling, or again, you will die. Those are technically all choices, but uh, we wouldn't ever uh, think of those as uh, narrative choices. Um, these are, you know, judgments of how you can use your tools uh, in order to uh, meet your objective. Uh, but at the end of the day, the only thing that's decided by that is whether or not you will win or lose. Uh, but narrative choices, I would distinguish those uh, in the following ways. One, they are expressions of beliefs or opinions uh, that define your character or the player character. Um, they are opportunities uh, for you to say, here's who I am, uh, I believe in doing this, I believe this is who I want to be, uh, and you have a choice of, of how you can express that. Uh, likewise, I would say that uh, these narrative choices are removed from aspects of skill or strategy. When you make a choice about who you are, it's a simple statement. Um, there's, there's nothing that will make you win or lose in a narrative choice. Uh, which isn't to say that narrative choices can't be delicate, they can, uh, they can still be difficult to manage and to navigate, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, really a narrative choice is uh, one that uh, is removed uh, from that. Um, and I think uh, the key here is that what it does is it transfigures your play, your ordinary play, into role play, and I think uh, the best way to, to outline that is with an example, papers please. Of course, in Papers, Please, uh, what you're doing is quite simple. You are stamping a passport. If it meets all of the criteria, and if it doesn't, you're rejecting it. The tools at your disposal allow you to look through the passport, ask relevant questions uh, to determine whether or not uh, they meet uh, the parameters for acceptance. Um, but uh, what makes the game really sing, in my opinion, is the narrative overlay that, that goes with this. So for here, we have the example of this, this poor woman who's trying to leave in the country with a passport that doesn't quite meet the criteria, um, but we know that she is trying to, to see her son, who she hasn't seen in six years. Uh, so what we have here is um, a, a, the game experience uh, transfigured into a role play. So now the question is not just, does this passport meet the criteria, but do I think, even though it doesn't meet the criteria, it's still more important uh, that this woman be able to get in uh, to Ostrotska and to see her son? Uh, but with all that, uh, I, would, I would caution you to not think of choices uh, as points in time. Uh, they are not individual moments. Rather, choices are a process that happens over the course of play, uh, and I'd like to break that down. I think we can do that with four components. A choice is a question. Uh, what is it that the player is, is being asked about? What are they making a choice regarding? Uh, the second is information. In order for a player to make a meaningful choice, in order for it to not just be an arbitrary experience, you need to give them information in order to inform their opinion. Uh, otherwise, uh, it again won't be meaningful. It'll be something that's selected uh, just out of the blue. Um, opportunities. These are what we typically consider as choices. 
uh, an opportunity is a, a ground for self-expression uh, that the game will recognize. It is the moments in time when the player is presented with a set of options that they can choose from to say, this is who I am, this is who I want to be, this is how I want to use those tools which are at my disposal. Uh, and finally, we have feedback, which is the beat from the game that says, if you've made your choice, I'm responding to your choice. I, I think one way that we can look at choice in games, narrative choices, is that they're a dialogue uh, with the player. The game is saying something, it's asking something, the player is responding with another statement, and the game says, I hear you, and we'll go on from there. Uh, one last note I think is, is important is that um, always be very careful that when a player makes a choice when they say something, uh, they don't say something they don't expect to say. It's very awkward when uh, a player makes a choice says, uh, you know, I want to interrogate uh, this suspect um, about this point. And instead they say something very mean and very horrible. I had an experience uh, like that in the game which completely took me out. Um, that aside, uh, now that we can see what this process is, uh, we can see how we can begin to break down the narrative in a game uh, and begin to really intertwine it with uh, mechanics, uh, with level design, etc. Um, how we can really reinforce these points. Uh, so with that, we will uh, start to look at them individually. Questions, a um, few tips on how to, to better manage these. Don't overdo your stakes. Uh, it is certainly fun to save the world, but when the stakes are incomprehensibly large, um, there's a threshold at which they just sort of become meaningless. Um, it's okay to have uh, a state just be something that's uh, small, intimate, quiet, uh, that is of uh, importance to no one else but the player, or the player character, or those that the player character have come to meet in their journey. Um, likewise, uh, please always be respectful of the player's time. Uh, when you are asking the player a question, um, is this something that they're going to be interested in? Is this something that is just going to be a filler beat? Uh, because if it is, try and wrap it into something more interesting. Try and find some way of elevating it so that you're not just doing a small check-in uh, with the player. And likewise, if the question is too easy, um, if there's only one right answer, you, you probably shouldn't uh, be asking it. Questions can be difficult. They can be philosophical. Uh, they can take the players uh, into uncomfortable territory. You can ask them something they would rather not be asked make them examine things uh, that uh, they might not have thought of otherwise. Um, be sure that you're, you're really engaging with your player there. Um, likewise, if you pose a question, it's best to let them answer. Um, if, you, if you're going to ask them something, be sure that the player has the grounds uh, to respond to it. Otherwise, it's best not to do it. Uh, another point here as well I think is important is that questions don't always have to be explicit. Questions can be implicit, and I think sometimes when they are, they can be much stronger. I think the best way to illustrate that is with an example. Uh, if the question were, do you trust me? The answer is yes, no, maybe. That's fine, uh, but if you were to instead frame it in a matter of, um, there have been, let's say, a series of murders and spooky happenings, and late one night, uh, there's a knock on your door, and someone is saying, can you please let me in? Can you please let me in? That's the same question, really, of do you trust me? But it's a, certainly a lot more interesting. It's a lot more memorable. And it's something that players will, will hold on to uh, and really get more into um, than they would have otherwise. Uh, <laughs> performing, uh, you're going to be shining light on the questions the players are going to be thinking about. Um, informing the player's opinion is something that happens along the journey. You're going to be teaching them at every step. Uh, not what you want them to answer, but you're just giving them the uh, details to understand what they will be answering. So shed light on all sides of the question. Uh, if there is, let's say, a, um, an ideal or a character or a faction that you want them to be interacting with, um, working with, uh, then complicate their assumptions, you know, teach them about who these people are, teach them what these ideals mean and stand for, and show that maybe, you know, it's not just a straightforward decision. It's not maybe just a matter of these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. Um, when you give the player something to really think about, something to really mull on, I think that in itself is another form of play. Uh, when players are able to look at your game world, and really start to think about it and make up their minds, uh, come to their own conclusions. It's another form of play, and it really helps pull them into your title. 
Um, and likewise, warm their hearts. This is the time where you can inform players. This is the part where you can get them involved. You can make them care by teaching them, uh, again, about uh, a companion that they're with. You can't necessarily <coughs> guarantee what the player's uh, feelings will be, but you can try at this stage to uh, push them into caring about the stakes. Uh, opportunities. Um, again, these are moments where the players will be making their choices. Uh, I tend to, to think of these as Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or gifts in general. Uh, in my estimation, the ones that are the most interesting are the ones that you didn't even know you wanted. Uh, so all the way along, players will start to think about what they want to do, uh, how they want to do it, but I think it's our job as writers and designers and storytellers, game makers, uh, to give them opportunities they couldn't have even imagined before. So let them answer these questions in unexpected and surprising ways. Um, and indeed, not only let them answer questions, but put them into questions that they wouldn't have expected. Uh, makes them start to think about things they wouldn't have thought about otherwise, to come to uh, conclusions they might not have ever come to on their own. Uh, again, this is a dialogue with the player. We're trying to give them uh, something interesting to think about, something interesting to interact with. Uh, and we're hoping that we can get a more interesting response out of them by giving them here more interesting prompts. Um, this is really the fantasy element of it. Uh, think of these as the I can do that moments uh, that, that really get players excited uh, and engaged. This is where the fantasy is of not only what they can be, but who they can be. Uh, additionally, the, the wrapping of the gift is as important as the gift. How are you going to set the scene? How are you going to phrase the question? Again, you can think of the implicit uh, example earlier um, as a way of framing it in a different way that really makes it shine a bit more. Uh, there are a host of things you can do to, to wrap your, your question and make it uh, more interesting. Uh, are you going to put a time pressure on it? Is it going to be uh, something that comes at in an emotional height? Is it just going to be a really low key, sort of quiet, moment question. Um, there are so many ways that you can frame these things uh, that it can really make all the difference. Uh, and make them flavorful. Uh, every gift should be equally as good. Every choice should be equally as good. That isn't to say you know, they should all be uh, happy choices that the player should necessarily feel good about, uh, but that is to say that every choice in itself should be a winner uh, and that there shouldn't just be, again, one better than the other. Uh, and the uh, last note here that I think is, is important um, is that I, I think players should always be given the opportunity to say whatever they may think. Um, for instance, I, I don't think that players are really upset about being on a railroad. I don't think players are really upset about being uh, put into linear experience. What I think players get upset about is when they're forced to make a statement of belief uh, that they really don't want to make. Uh, I was speaking to someone the other day, and they said that they were playing a game, uh, and a character had asked them, uh, basically, how do you feel about me? What is our relationship? And the only answers were, you're my best friend, or, you know, I, I, I kind of like you. And well, he didn't like this character, and I, I think if, if you don't like a character, you know, um, a player should have the grounds to say, uh, hey, you know, I, I, I don't like this character, or maybe I have a crush on this character, or uh, maybe this character is my best friend, maybe I'm not yet decided. Uh, but the player should always have the opportunity to say what, what they may be feeling. When you, uh, of course, you can only give them so many options, uh, but when you give them just enough room to, to fit in, uh, to, to make a choice, what they may be thinking. I think that justifies it. I think it's, it's a that all right. Uh, and finally, uh, the feedback. Um, how should you go about uh, responding to a player? Uh, well, the trick is that you're always working on the ground uh, Games are always, 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 always going to be on, on a straight course. We can only design so many opportunities. And when you pick all of those opportunities, you're going to get the same outcome. It's going to be a railroad, so it's not something to worry about. Uh, the trick, I think, the most important thing is simply, again, to ensure that when the player is able to make a statement, they're able to make a statement that is representative of what they believe. 
Again, you can't accommodate for it all, but just try and make sure that uh, there's wiggle room for everyone. Uh, because even, again, if the track diverges left or right, um, it, you're still going to be on track at the end of the day. And the most important thing is simply to have a beat that says, we have heard you, we respect your choice, and we will uh, uh, keep on going from there. Because again, at the end of the day, that's really what players are after, is just that dialogue. It's always going to continue in the same way. Um, but as long as the player has been heard, it's been recognized that they've been heard, that's what matters. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how we are on time, uh, but that's a uh, quick and easy version of it. Uh, again, the hope was to give you all a practical framework. Uh, this should all be something that you can uh, take, use on your own stories. Think of uh, these four points, which I should have put here at the end, but here they are. The questioning, the information, the opportunities, the feedback, again, uh, use this to look at how you're telling your narrative and think of opportunities throughout your story and your storytelling uh, through how you interact with your mechanics, how you build your levels, everything. Uh, can I be reinforcing one of these four points? Can I be doing something more interesting with one of these four points? Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you any questions, you have time. I'm not sure that we can do Oh, I'm so sorry, but I'll be having to stick to anyone. Details up there. Again, thank you so much. <laughs>